Hi, welcome back to Danny Harris Arts. In this part two segment of this channel catfish wood carving project, I'm gonna be working on the fins. And as you can see, I've already got them carved or, or cut out on the bandsaw, and I did that off camera just so that I don't bore you with that monotonous step. Um, also gonna be working on the gill detail today and the mouth detail. But I'm gonna take just a second to uh, to thank all you guys that have subscribed to the channel. As a new YouTuber, um, I have finally hit that milestone of a thousand subscribers. I've actually passed it by uh, about 20 or so. Um, so now I'm going to be working on the next thousand. <laughs> means a lot of projects coming up. But I really do appreciate you guys watching. As a new YouTuber, I've only been carving for about uh, three years. Uh, some of you know that. Um, but I've also only had the YouTube channel about three years. So it's all, it's all, this is all new to me. It's all a learning curve. Uh, but I appreciate y'all following along. And, uh, and supporting the channel. Uh, if you like these videos and you haven't subscribed, I really would appreciate it if you would consider subscribing. So anyway, I'm gonna get ready and get turned around here and get started on this project. And so all I'm gonna do here is take these down, and thin them out roughly, and get them down to a thinner, closer to the fin shape. And then I'll go through and uh, start adding detail. As you can see here, I'm going down to about an eighth of an inch from the center line. And that'll give me plenty to add detail to. I'll take it down even thinner as I get closer. So I just something to just kind of sneak up on, not at all at one point. I got such a bad habit of getting too thin on some of them, uh, which I'm probably sure I'll do here at some point. Gonna do something a little bit different in this video at the end i'm gonna add a little blooper reel um kind of show you i'm human and i mess up a lot <laughs> so i hope you'll stick around to the end to see that Okay, this is the dorsal fin. I think it's gonna be the easiest dorsal fin I've ever had to do. So I'm just drawing the straight line down it from a center point. And they have this real sharp, spiny, thick uh, dorsal spine there. And then the rest of the fines follow. And I'm gonna put a little bit of movement in here. Um, going this way so I'll bring this line around and I want to flip out just a little bit on this back here so it'll be rolling just a little bit that way The pectoral fins, 
I believe I'm gonna pretty much lock them in place because um, most catfish have, they can lock these things in place. The, the dorsal fin can lock up to where it will not fold down the same as the uh, the pectoral fins they will uh, they can lock in place where they're sticking straight out uh, and I think that's kind of what I want to depict here or at least have them out flared out with maybe just a little bit of motion in the fins but they lock they can lock those in place um, and I'm assuming it's for predators that can't make it harder for them to swallow they lock them fins in place and it's almost impossible to get anything uh, unless it's a huge fish to, to get it down. It's uh, pretty neat. Yeah, I never caught a catfish before. Uh, there's a little, there's a little creek catfish called a mad tom, and they only get four or five inches long, tiny little catfish, and they live mostly in creeks. And um, I had a cousin years ago, I was, we were swimming and she stepped on one and that dorsal fin went in through the bottom of her big toe on the on the pad of her big toe and I watched three uncles hold her down with another one with a pair of pliers to pull that thing out because they are barbed on the ends of the um, of the main spine there they're barbed right on the edge and uh, I'm going to try to get that detail in there I don't know yet I'll have to I have to find a better detailed uh, reference photo, but they are pretty formidable as far as uh, protection. I want to take just one quick second here. Um, where'd it go? Um, oh, here it is. You know, I'm talking about people that subscribe to my channel. And so I get a lot of people that call me and talk about and ask me questions and I, you know, and I answer them as best I can uh, from, you know, from what I've learned. But I had one uh, subscriber, his name's Travis Hunter, and he saw my videos back when I was using Lexan plastic on, um, on some of my fish. And uh, so he was interested in using that on his projects and what, what Travis does is he makes these uh, fish decoys. Now, if you're from the northern part of the country in the U.S., uh, you know what a fish decoy is. They'll use they'll hang this um, they'll hang this with a rope through the ice, and uh, and they dangle it, and they pull it up and down, and they got these big wings, metal wings on them, exaggerated fins. To and if you look real close, it's also got a little bow in it. Uh, and they're counterweighted with with lead. He's got some. This is pretty heavy, uh, but he's got some some lead inserts in here. And um, but they use this to lure and pike and walleye, or you know whatever else that would eat something like this. And then they spear it uh, with a with a gig spear through the ice. And being down south from where I am here in Arkansas, nobody ice fishes here because lakes very seldom if ever freeze over thick enough to get on the ice fish so uh, a lot of people down south here don't know what these are uh, but I've seen guys on YouTube make them but anyway Travis uh, Travis Hunter makes these and uh, he sent me this for the help I gave him on the uh, on carving the fins and uh, just I really appreciate it a little black crappie uh, it's a neat looking little piece but I can see where it would make a great decoy to attract other fish. And with these, um, with the with the curve being in it and these wide, exaggerated fins, they act like as a, uh, they act kind of like planes, or like the wings on a plane, and they keep it uh, upright. And when they pull it up, it'll it'll circle, and it'll make circles. And, and then when they let it back down, it'll spiral down uh, to attract the other fish. Uh, Travis don't have a YouTube page, but if you're interested in uh, a fish decoy, if you're up north and you want to, and you're looking into collecting fish decoys or using fish decoys, 
uh, leave me a comment in the comment section below and uh, I'll get you in touch with Travis but I really appreciated him sending me this it's pretty cool I really like it anyway um, and I've had some other subscribers send me things um, Ron Gableman of uh, Krusty Cranks and Basswood Carvings Ron contacted me a couple months ago or last year and uh, asked me if I'd be interested in doing a um, video vlog on his um, basswood carving channel. Um, he's a chip carver, so he does mostly knives and little uh, caricature, little figurines. And uh, so I came on and we did the uh, show, and I'll put a link to, this, to that link uh, to that video down below if you hadn't already seen it. Uh, but Ron also has crusty cranks and um, he makes these beautiful hand-painted crankbaits and lures and they are just phenomenal and uh, Ron sent me some I've kind of helped him out on some uh, scale burning tips and uh, he was kind enough to send me all these crankbaits that he's made and this, man, I can see, I haven't used them yet, but that's going to be a, a walleye and bass catching uh, lure right there on Lake Washita, one of my favorite lakes around here. So was this one, a little square bill. Um, but all of them are beautiful. Um, he's got some jerk baits, uh, beautiful jerk baits. That's a fish catching uh, lure on Lake Washita. And then uh, he's made some top water poppers, kind of like a pop R. Just beautifully handcrafted, hand painted, just highly detailed. So check him out. He also does some um, soft crank uh, plastic worms trailers, and I don't have any of those out here. Um, and I got more crankbaits he sent me, but I gave I gave a lot to my son. And I uh, kept a few for myself, but I really appreciate him. Uh, when, as I was getting closer to a thousand subscribers, he he sent out an email blast to guys in his carving club and had them come out and um, kind of help put me over the edge of a thousand. So I really appreciated it. So I appreciate y'all letting me stop and talk about my friends there for a minute. Uh, it's really neat that uh, this channel, I really didn't ever think about it. But I've got guys from all over the world, all over the country here that uh, that follow me and we chat and we talk a lot. Uh, I've got guys in uh, Iceland and I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce their names because I can't. <laughs> uh, but I've, I've been talking with one guy over there uh, that's uh, actually two different guys. Uh, one of but one of them is making a big steelhead and I made him some um, some uh, scale burning tips to burn the scales on this huge steel head he's making or he's carving and uh, problem is I don't speak his language and he don't speak my language but he's got a friend that um, that he'll send the text to or the messages to and he interprets them for him um, Facebook has a little trans Translation thing if, you're, if it's a foreign language you can hit a translation, but it's hit and miss it's Sometimes it's hard to get uh, the gist of what they're talking about, but uh, but anyway, it's really cool that uh, That I've got followers from all over the all over the country and all over the world. I never really Expected that I really didn't think about that when I started this channel uh, But it's really really neat and I'm really excited about the future of it and where it's going um so I'm gonna get back to this now. I've, I've yammered long enough. So let me get back here what I'm doing here.
Well, I screwed up again. I got the tail too thin right there. It's gonna be hard to put any detail in that. That gummit. Trying to get it thin to make it look more realistic, and I've gone overboard. So we'll see how it goes there. I don't know how, I don't know how I'm gonna fix that. Um, well, just one of those mistakes. I wasn't paying attention. Almost thinking maybe cutting the tail off and cutting, making a new tail and then attaching it. Uh, I don't know, I'm gonna start putting detail on it and then we'll see. All right, so I'm drawing these on and they have about 15, as best I can tell, 15 rays in their tail fin. Then they've got some little uh, short ones up here on the side. There's 15 rays on the main part of the tail. So I went through and I marked little tick marks till I got it straightened out. Where it was even across. All right, so I'm gonna get my diamond bits out here. Oh, I guess it's gonna be too thin right there, but I'll try it and see. That might work all right. I'll take it easy. Okay, I went through and made the small spines, the gaps between the spines with a smaller diamond bit. What I'm doing now is I'm going over with a bigger bit and that'll kind of round them all and take away the square edges. So I went from I went from this size to making the gaps in between for the spines to this bigger one. And that'll just kind of round off the spaces, make them a little more uniform. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this little flat tip diamond bit and I'm gonna go on the edges of all of these where they split and start putting the little splits in them. Probably can't really see that on camera. See that? I used to burn these in with a wood burner, but I prefer doing them with the bit now because 
the wood burner leaves a little bit too deep of a a cut and it, it doesn't take paint well uh, I think these look a little more natural when I use a bit purchase a wood burner so what I'm doing here is just taking this uh, diamond flame burr and uh, following along the contour lines of the gills. And the catfish is, is more rounded but not quite as defined on a uh, scaled fish. You can see them but they're just not as prominent. Um, so I just go around and follow all the, the lines of the gill detail of the gill detail I got drawn in and then I'll feather it back towards the body and then uh, and after that, I'll do a final sanding to blend it all in. This area right here, there's a little bony structure um, right under the skin here. And it's, it's part of the locking mechanism of the pectoral fins. Um, and they, can, they can lock the pectoral fins in an out position and it, I think it has something to do with this bony structure here underneath the uh, skin here. But it's fairly visible. Okay, I've decided to um, carve the eyes. I was going back and forth over where whether I wanted to um, just drill a cavity and, and make an eye to put in it or uh, uh, I don't want to use glass eyes but I've got a process now that I'm using to make eyes but as small as these are I don't think they would probably work so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this bit here that I made uh, you can buy a bit that'll carve out of the circle hole for an eye but I didn't have any. Um, so what I've done here was I just took a little quarter inch bolt and rounded the head off down to the size I wanted of the eye. And then I used a um, diamond bit to hollow out the inside of it here. So, and what that'll do is that'll give me a, uh, um, do it on this old duck head here. So it's going to give me an eye. And I didn't make it real shallow. I mean, I made the indention kind of shallow because I want it just a little bit flat on the top because I'll, I will um, use epoxy, um, UV epoxy to build up the eye cornea. So I want to use that here. And I'm gonna make sure I get it right. <laughs> Now I'm going to take this down so that it fits better. So, and if I don't like it, I can go ahead and drill it out and make the eyes. Okay, there's the eyes. Now I'm going to go ahead and take down the edge of this here.
Okay. Um, these just take a lot of fit and finish, tweaking to get them to fit. And I made the mistake. The body has a slight curve here, and I always make that mistake. And I, I cut the fin straight, and it should have had a little bit of curve. But I was able to get the tab curved a little bit. And um, so I had to do a little finagling on the on the fin itself. But a lot of this will be covered up with the epoxy putty um, to blend it into the, the body. All right, let me get the other ones going here. So, let's see here. This will give me a rough idea of where the dorsal fin goes. I'm gonna do it next. Okay, so I've got my suit line marked for the dorsal fin. And I'm gonna have to take this down a little bit, but um, I left it fat on purpose. So I'll cut the hole and then uh, cut this to fit. This little bit here, I think I've showed it before, but it makes the perfect, it's just a, a rough carbide, and it's not even carbide, it's a, uh, a like a stone bit. I don't know, it might be a smooth, I mean, fine carbide. But anyway, it's round, and then it gives to the shaft, it gives the perfect depth, about a little over eighth of an inch deep, three sixteenths maybe. And all I do is just go down until the shaft touches the body and I got my hole. So what I got to do now is um, cut this to fit. Okay, I cut a little length off of it here and then I'm going to use this bit. Save it down. I'm going down to the shaft. I'm just using the edge of it to cut the little slot. Too small, but it'll be all right once I once I glue it in. Then use uh, epoxy putty to to uh, seal it up. So let me get started on that, and I'll be back. I'm going to start on the uh, pelvic fins here, or the pectoral fins. Get the, get the slots cut for them, and get them cut apart, and. Uh, fix the hole for them.
Okay, these fans are not going to stick very long. <laughs> I just barely got them stuck in there. Uh, but that's going to be it for part two of the Channel Catfish Wood Carving Project. I got the fins done today. And like I say, they're just temporarily stuck in there. Uh, got the gill detail done, the eyes done. I didn't get to the inside of the mouth. And I'll probably do that off camera just because it's so hard to do. Let me take these off because they're going to fall off. But you can kind of get the idea of how those are looking there uh, and in the detail on the bottom but uh, I, I think it's turned out pretty good and I like the way it's uh, coming along uh, I still got to do the whiskers the inside of the mouth and clean up this uh, gill cover detail here and then it'll be ready to go on to sealing um, and painting so um, probably gonna do the whiskers off camera just because I'm, I haven't experimented with it yet um, but I will show you them as I get them made. I do have a, a link, and then I'll put it up here again. I put it in the first one, but I do have a link uh, to the deer antlers that I've done using the polymer clay. So I'm going to use the polymer clay uh, for the whiskers on this one as well. So um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them for me in the comment section below. And uh, like I asked at the very first of the video, if you like these videos, uh, I appreciate it if you consider subscribing if you haven't already. But I will see you guys on uh, part three. Hi, welcome back to Danny Harris Arts. In this part two, uh, <laughs> oh come on, get it together, get it together, Danny. Hi, welcome back to Danny Harris Arts. In this part two. Hi, welcome back to Danny Harris Arch. In this part two segment of the Channel Catfish Wood Covering Project, I'm going to be. If you haven't already and you like these videos, I'd appreciate it if you'd consider subscribing. Bugs. If you haven't subscribed, please consider. Mosquito. Get out of here. <laughs> Let's try this again. Hi, uh, welcome back to Danny Harris Arts. In this part two segment of this uh, as a new YouTuber, I have finally hit that that uh, thousand subscriber mark. It uh, never thought it would come. Uh, it just seemed like it was. Um, a little bit of blah, 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 blah.